everybody, it's Michael. I'm back again with another expansion overview, although today it's for a prototype. The game in question is Grand Austria Hotel. The expansion is called Alles Walzer, or Let's Waltz in English, and this is currently on Kickstarter. The expansion is, of course, also by Lookout Spiele. It's by the same designers, Simeone Luciani and Virginio Gigli. Similar to the base game, it's for two to four players, ages 12 and up, and plays in about 90 minutes. The expansion will contain several modules, and today I'm only talking about the first and biggest module, Wiener Ballseele, the Vienna Ballrooms. Since it's a prototype, both the components and the rules are subject to change. To use this module with the base game, you add the new politic cards, the new emperor tiles, the new guest cards, and the new staff cards to the components for the base game. The module comes with five of these ballrooms, but you only use three in any given game. So you select three randomly and also put them face up with either this side for two players or the other side for three and four players. Since I'm simulating a three-player game, this is the side I'll use for all of them. Okay, so I've selected three ballrooms at random and also in random order because now each one receives one of these markers, which indicates after which round they will be scored. And also the rightmost room receives this balcony tile. There's a new resource in the game, champagne. So these cubes are placed with the other resources. Then of course the players need ways to get champagne. So there's this overlay tile which goes on the action board. And so basically whenever you get food or drinks, you can also get champagne, but it's last in the order. So basically we have to get at least three things to get one champagne. And in addition to the four starting resources, everybody also starts with one champagne in their kitchen. It should also be noted that while champagne is of course a drink in real life, in the game it's considered neither food nor drink. So whenever you see the symbol that lets you get any food or drink, you're not allowed to get champagne. Then in reverse player order, everybody gets to choose one of these rehearsal tiles, which goes right here next to the hotel, and each rehearsal tile contains four rooms. Everybody then takes their 10 dancers and puts one in this room, two in this, three in this, finally four up here. During the game, whenever you satisfy a customer's needs, so for example by placing two strudel and two cake, you get the victory points as, as usual, you also get the reward, and then instead of putting that guest into a room in your hotel, you can decide to send him to one of the ballrooms instead. The color does not matter for this. The card is discarded as usual. And then you take any one dancer from any of your rehearsal rooms, for example this one, and put it into a ballroom. Now, whenever you empty one of your rooms, like it just happened here, you immediately get the reward. So in this case, Blue would immediately get one strudel or one cake. The higher rooms are of course harder to empty because there are more dancers in there, two, three and four respectively, but on the other hand the rewards are higher. So let's just say we picked this dancer, we received a cake. We can choose any one of the three ballrooms, even one that has already been scored, and each ballroom consists of three rows. Now depending on which row you'd like to put your dancer in, it costs different amounts of champagne. So let's say that we already had two champagne, we'd be able to place our dancer here. You always use the leftmost empty space in the row you're putting your dancer in. You'd have to give up two champagne. And then we'd immediately receive the reward, which in this case is two victory points. Each ballroom only has a certain capacity, so once a row is full, it's full. However, in the third room, there's a balcony, and the balcony aligns with the topmost row, so in this room, any amount of dancers can go into the third row. If you receive champagne by emptying out a rehearsal room, you can use that champagne to place your dancer in the room. There's also a new kind of reward, which is this symbol, which means that you can send a dancer to any ballroom paying the normal cost in champagne. So when completing this guest, you can first, for the reward, send a dancer to any ballroom, and then for this guest, you can decide whether she goes to a hotel room or also to a ballroom. And there are also rewards that let you send a dancer to a room, but you get a discount on the champagne cost. So, why would you send dancers to the ballrooms? Well, of course, there's the placement bonus, which you get if you place 
a dance in the second or third row. As we've seen in this ballroom, it's victory points, two and five respectively. In this one, you can flip prepared rooms to the other side without putting a guest in them. In the second row, it's any room, but not on the fourth floor. In the third row, it's any room, and you also get three victory points. In this room, you get steps on the entry track. And looking at the rooms that we didn't choose for this game, this room gives you resources, cake on here, one of each other resource up here. Finally, this room simply gives you money, two here and three here. And the second reason is, of course, the scoring. Each ballroom is scored after a certain round. As indicated by the number up here, the scoring takes place in the same rounds as the Emperor's scoring, but after the Emperor's scoring. And each ballroom is scored differently. The only thing they have in common, if you don't have a dancer in the ballroom at all, you lose five points. This one looks for a pair of dancers. So for every pair that a player has put there, he receives seven points. So in this case, Gray would receive 14 points because he has two pairs. Purple only has one pair, they receive seven points, and blue only has one dancer, so no additional points at all. In this room, we take a look at the total amount of dancers everybody placed. So blue placed four dancers, and so that's 16 points. Purple placed one, so that's one point. Gray didn't place one at all, so that's the usual minus five. And you might have noticed that there are certain spots in a room that are only available in a four-player game, so if this is a three-player game, this dancer should, for example, be here to make this example work. In this spoiler room, we score each row separately, and whoever has the most dancers gets seven points, and whoever has the second most dancers gets two points. So on the bottom row, there's a tie, so we add up together the two and the seven, split that, round it down, so both gray and purple get four points. In the second row, nobody gets points. And up here, we also consider the balcony. The balcony is part of the third row, so blue has the majority, and gets seven points, while purple gets two points. In this room, whoever plays the most stanzas will get 15 points, the second most 10 points, and the third most five points. Again, ties are resolved in the usual way. So blue has three dancers, and so does gray. So they share 25 points, 12 for each of them, and then purple gets five points because they're third. And finally, in this room, we take a look at how many dancers everybody has placed and then multiply it by the highest row that they have placed a dancer in. So blue has two dancers. His highest dancer is in the third row. Three times two is six points. Purple has three dancers. The highest row is row two, again, six points. Gray only has one dancer. The highest row is the first row, so one times one, one point. These are basically all the rules. There's two resource, champagne. You can get champagne through rewards or on these two spaces. Whenever you satisfy a guest, you can decide to send a dancer into a room. Dancers are taken from here. As soon as you've emptied one of your rehearsal rooms, you get the reward immediately. Dancers are put into the rooms on a certain row by paying the champagne cost. And after the third, fifth and seventh round, after the Emperor scoring, the ballrooms are scored. Then let's first take a look at the rehearsal tiles and then at the additional material that comes with this module. So these are the four rehearsal tiles. They pretty much let you do different things, but they're the usual rewards. There's money, there's free resources, there's champagne, there's steps on the Emperor track, flipping rooms, preparing rooms, maybe at a discount, or getting and hiring additional staff members. The new Emperor tiles give you, as a bonus, champagne, let you place a dancer for free, or give you two points for each dancer you've already placed. The penalty is losing champagne or removing one or even two dancers from the room that's about to be scored. The new politics cards reward you for having at least seven champagne, seven dancers, or having served four tourists, aka the green guests. Then there's a whole bunch of new guest cards. I won't go into detail about all of them. We've already seen some of the effects. You can receive champagne, you can send additional dancers to ballrooms, maybe at a discount, maybe even multiple ones, and you also get money. There are also some guests that don't give you any rewards, but their victory point value is extremely high. And finally, there are also some guests that want to order champagne. Then there are also several new staff members. First, let's start with ones which you can activate once per round. You can pay champagne to get points, get champagne, buy champagne and points for money, or spend resources to send dancers for free. Then there are two one-time effects. One simply gives you three champagne, 
One lets you send two dances. The first one costs one less champagne, the second two less champagne. There's one end of game scoring card that let you score two points per dancer that you've placed in any room. And then finally the staff members with the permanent effects. Whenever you take a one, you get a point in a champagne. Whenever you take a two, you get to draw a staff member and get one champagne. Whenever you take a three, get a money and send one dancer at full cost. Whenever you take a four, get a champagne and a money. Whenever you take a five, send a dancer at a discount of one champagne. Whenever you place a disc on a politics card, get two champagne. Whenever you send a dancer, draw one staff member and get one money. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of the first module from the Grand Austria Hotel expansion. Let's waltz, alles walzer. As always, thanks for watching, have fun playing and until next time. Bye bye.